Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is on one of the three corals that I purchased from Worldwide Corals on Black Friday. And if you follow me, uh, you'll know the pattern that I first I shoot a video of the coral or corals that I purchased. And then I go ahead and on each week, I'll go ahead and talk about each individual coral. Well, this video that I'm shooting today is about that. We're going to talk about the one in the middle, which is called the Leptastria. It's an LPS coral, and I'm going to show you the uh, coral care of it, where it comes from, different things that you should know about it, and the placement of the coral on your uh, aquarium. So let's take a deep dive and check it okay, out. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank, focus at the actual coral. Okay, now, uh, Leptastria is an LPS coral. For those of you that don't know what LPS stands for, it stands for long polyp stony corals. Now, this type of coral is a member of what they call the Favite family. That, that information, I'll put it on the uh, video. Which means that uh, coming from the Favites, it's definitely an encrusting coral. Now, let's talk a little bit about the difficulty level. This coral is a medium difficulty LPS coral with sensitivities mainly to stable alkalinity. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that this coral will not tolerate swings of DKH. If you're trying to chase the numbers on DKH, you might have a problem with this coral. And then let's go next to the topic of feeding. This type of coral uh, feeds on meat-based foods, including pellets, the, addi the addition of phytoplankton, and other small types of, of foods, including, for instance, reefoids. All these type of uh, foods are highly recommended for this coral. And if you follow me, you know that what I feed always to all of my corals to this reef is reefoids. I'm feeding it once a week, matter of fact, on Mondays. And that's a full spectrum food, and all corals really benefit from that type of food. Now let's go to lighting. This coral should be kept at a par value of 120 to 250. Now when I say that, I'm talking about that this coral, in general terms, it's, it requires low to medium lighting. And uh, you can move it around to higher light, but for that, you would have to acclimate it like if you follow me, you'll see on my previous video when I talk about acclimation that uh, what I do, just a recap on my previous video, what I do is when I buy corals, I put them on the substrate for two weeks as you're seeing here. Then after two weeks, I start to move them up a little bit, not exactly where I think that they should actually go. I start to move them around. Now, knowing that this coral will tolerate a par value of 120 to 250. That alerts me that it's a low to medium type uh, coral, that type of light that it takes. So I have to be careful, but at the same token, if I want to raise it even higher, then I would have to do it, but in slow increments, like move it up a little, wait like a few days or a week, and move it up a little more until I reach the targeted goal of placement where I would like to place it. But to play it safe, it is a low to medium type of light coral. And let's go next to the water flow. This coral will do best under medium to higher current to keep its galactical surface clear of detritus and other debris. And then uh, one other topic, placement like I was mentioning before, when it comes to the lighting, uh, general areas near the bottom with plenty of room to encrust over rocks is best. Now, Leptastria is an overly aggressive but may still sting neighbors. Why? Because it's an LPS. Uh, as you look at it, those little yellow spots that you see, that's the, the actual uh, polyp. Okay, now in the middle, there is uh, going to be like sweeper tentacles that come out. And they come out fairly long, so if you have a coral close to it, it could sting it. Now, when it comes to where do they come from? Well, 
This, of course, obviously is a frag from a frag from a frag. But the mother colonies come actually from Australia, including the Great Barrier Reef. And when it comes to this coral, whom is this coral good for? Well, this coral is really not a beginner's type coral, but I will say this. If you do your homework, you read about it, you ask questions, and you go into YouTube or other types of uh, research, I believe that a beginner could actually keep this coral. One final note that I thought I'd throw in is being an encrusting coral, when it comes to the placement of the coral, either A, you can keep it on the plug and then put it in a hole or in a place where it'll actually spread and crust the uh, plug and then continue on encrusting on the rock. Or B, you can go ahead and detach it from the plug. And then you can go ahead and place it on an area on the rock work where it'll just go ahead, start to encrust and continue to uh, grow and well, grow. and there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. You found it educational, informative. If you did, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And right next to it, there's a little bell. Hit that. That's the notification bell. So every time I uh, upload a video, which is weekly, you'll be the first ones to uh, be notified that Eddie's Reef Aquaria uploaded a video. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.